Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. Space, space, space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one, The Answer, written by Ack1308. The auditorium was vast. Johannes couldn't see properly from his point of view, because the lights were almost blinding him. But he was reasonably sure he was packed shoulder to shoulder. Or uh, whatever they used for shoulders. The members of every species in the greater galactic community. Not that every single one of them had a member of their species on the council itself, of course. That would make it far too unwieldy. He'd been briefed that like-minded groups of species had selected all elected representatives to speak for them before the council. Not unlike how things had been done back on Earth. Not all that long ago, he mused. Some systems never change. Not because they were the very best way to do things, but because they were the easiest to set up, and because they were good enough for the job. The old saying went through his mind, democracy is the very worst form of government, except for all the others. He had no idea who had originally come up with it, but there was a lot more than a grain of truth in it. The translator in his earpiece buzzed. Please move forward, stated the mechanical voice. Johannes knew that it was an AI tasked with orchestrating each and every step of the council dance. It set no policy and drafted no laws. It just moved the players around to where they needed to be. With a measured step, he was aware that every sapient in the audience would be examining him in high-definition 3V screens, watching him from every angle. Many would not have heard of humanity, and some would have heard some really ludicrous misleading stories. Every single one of them would be judging him. His stance, his stride, his clothing, his demeanor, even the cut of his hair. He'd done this before, wearing the same clothing, precision cut for his form, almost military in its style, but carrying none of his insignia or decorations upon it. He had stood before the Grand Assembly of earth mars Conclave and made his case to be humanity's envoy to the stars. They had deliberated then, long and hard. Questions had been flung at him from every angle, covering his view on every topic the Galactic Council was likely to quiz him on, and a few he doubted they even knew about. He had answered them all, drawing on his training to maintain decorum, even when the questions became provocative in their idiocy. At the end, they accepted his offer. On that day, he thought he would never be so nervous as he'd been when facing the conclave. He'd been wrong. Now, he faced a far wider stage, playing for far greater stakes. The orbital drop on Pavonus Mons in the latter stages of the Separation War had terrified him. But he'd gone through with it. Here and now, he wanted to vomit from the tension but he kept his body under strict control. Colonel Graham Johannes. The voice in his earpiece came across in a British accent, which he was sure the council member was not speaking. As a useful aid, the member was outlined in light. You come before the Galactic Council to request membership to our August body. Tell me, Colonel, your title denotes military leadership, does it not? Yes, honored council member, it does, he answered keeping his voice firm and clear. And you then seeking to place your species into the military arm of the council. Now was the part that he had dreaded. To go against the scripted answers was unheard of, but then, when had humanity not thrown out the script? Before I can answer that, honored council member, he answered, may I make a few simple points of my own? The light faded, and another one sprang into being, this was the current prime of the Galactic Council, the one through whom all authority devolved. You may proceed. This time, the voice was deep, rich, rumbling with authority. Humans are more than soldiers, Johannes began. Yes, we have fought many wars over the millennia, on the ground, in the air, on, and under the water. Brother has fought brother. Nations have fought to free themselves from other nations, but wars end, and more peaceful pursuits begin. He paused for breath, surreptitiously trying to get a gauge on how his extemporaneous speech was being taken. The council was sitting idly, 
or almost so. A few members were leaning across and whispering to one another. In the wider audience, it seemed that they were listening. At least, there was no sound of a proprium. We have also excelled in the field of exploration, he said. The first humans to circumnavigate our planet did so in wind-powered ships made of wood. Many died on such trips, but more came back, and so our knowledge grew. Our history of powered flight was barely two decades old when pilots flying craft so unsafe it would be a criminal act to attempt it now, blew off into the unknown to see what was there. It has been said that when we landed men on Earth's satellite, we were almost unable to do it, but we succeeded, and then repeated the event five more times. Before we were able to explore our outer solar system in person, we sent probes with cameras to examine each planet in turn, and our public marvel at the images thus returned. Again he paused, more for effect than needing to take a breath. The whispers had stopped and if he was any judge, there was a sense of tense expectation from the audience at large. A light came on over the third council member. Okay then, we get it, you're explorers. The AI placed an American twang to this one. Is that the way you want to go? Allow me to finish, please, honor council member. Johannes paused, waiting. Sure, go ahead. The light faded off once more. Johannes took a deep breath. Yes! We're good at war fighting, and we're good at exploration. But neither of these would have gotten us far without our willingness to delve into the sciences, to research and test and build new devices. We went from powered flight to landing men on the moon in less than 70 years, within the lifespan of a single member of our species. Our science has advanced to fits and starts, but it has advanced. Technology devised to further the cause of war has also assisted in scientific endeavors. Devices and substances developed to aid in exploration have also improved our grasp of scientific knowledge. He gave a brief bow to the Prime of the Galactic Council. That is the speech I wish to make, uh, honored Prime. The light glowed above the leader of the Council. What, then, is your chosen vocation for human species? Do you choose military, exploration, or science? Johannes smiled. He had been hoping the question would be phrased like that. My answer, honored prime, is, uh, he said, is, uh, yes. End of story. Story number two. Inhabited, unhabitable. Written by Fork Oof. Captain's Log. At a distance, one might think that Sol 3 would be a suitable world for colonization. With its abundant water and its location in the middle of its star's habitable zone. This is why we came to investigate. As we drew closer, we became intrigued with the detection of radio waves consistent with primitive communications. Imagine... Intelligent life emerging so far from the galactic core. What our probes found was simply bizarre. Gravity near double that of the home world, with only half the atmospheric oxygen levels. How could intelligent life have possibly evolved on such a world? But it gets worse, much worse. The planet is racked with near constant geologic and atmospheric instability. Impossibly large predators stalk every corner of the planet that shouldn't even be able to support life. Vegetation that naturally produces the toxins, capsaicin, and caffeine. And even more disturbing carnivorous plants. Just how? We briefly consisted contacting the local sapiens, but they seem to be in a near constant state of war. With themselves. Unfortunately, due to the low oxygen levels, the probe's propulsion systems was unable to generate enough thrust to escape the extreme gravity. We dare not risk recovery. It would be a suicide mission. We opted to destroy the probe and hoped that the warlike monsters native to this rock didn't find any scraps to reverse engineer. I would deliver my full report to the brood mother upon my return. Captain Zivrim Vim, 95th Exploratory Brood
I would quickly like to thank the Tier 5 members, Marky, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnolds, Oakfield, Lord Asdrakal, and it's difficult to pronounce. Thank you very much.